What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again with another 2014 fantasy football season preview here on my channel. And today, guys, what we're going to be talking about is the wide receiver position. We're talking about standard scoring leagues, so this is for non-point per reception leagues, but I think for the most part, the wide receivers kind of still mostly fall into the same categories because they catch a lot of passes versus the running backs. There's kind of more of a discrepancy between the guys who catch passes and don't. But nevertheless, I want to take a look at these at these wide receivers here and give you guys my opinions as far as who I believe are the top 10 fantasy wide receivers as we head into the season. So let's get started here at number 10, and we're taking a look at Pittsburgh wide receiver Antonio Brown, who at only 5'10 and 185 pounds, he really doesn't have the prototypical size that you would expect to see out of a top 10 fantasy wide receiver, but his route running and just his pure pass catching skills kind of make up for that lack of physical presence. Presence. And now with Mike Wallace down in Miami, Brown really stepped up as Big Ben's favorite target this past season. He caught 110 passes for nearly 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns in 2013. Now, he might not have the high-end touchdown potential that some of the other guys do due to his lack of size, but he's as consistent as it comes when it comes to pet catching passes and just getting yardage. So keep in mind that Antonio Brown caught at least five passes in every single game of the 2013 season, and I expect him to approach or even surpass 100 catches yet again here in 2014. I definitely like Antonio Brown a little bit better in PPR leagues, but still as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver in standard scoring leagues as well. Moving forward to number nine, and we have Tampa Bay wide receiver Vincent Jackson, who is coming off of his third straight season of over 1,000 yards and the fifth time in six seasons that he's eclipsed that total. The only time that Vincent Jackson hasn't hit 1,000 yards since 2008 was when he missed 11 games back in 2010 as a member of the San Diego Chargers. Jackson has six foot five, 230 pounds of frame, and that elite combination of size and speed, it, it's, it's just something that you don't really come across very often as a wide receiver. But what's kind of interesting is that even though he has that size, he really hasn't been able to kind of transition that into what we'd expect out of a guy with that type of type of frame. He hasn't scored double digit touchdowns in any season of his career. And I think that's really the only thing that holds him back from being a top five fantasy wide receiver. Now on the bright side, the quarterback change to Josh McCown should be an improvement for Jackson. And, you know, we saw that Josh McCown can throw the ball up and give his receivers the opportunity to make plays on the ball, just like he did in Chicago with that physical combination of Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey. I see a lot of that in Vincent Jackson and the new uh, wide receiver that they added this past offseason in rookie wide receiver Mike Evans. I think that that's actually going to help Jackson a little bit. A lot of people are thinking that Mike Evans might pull away looks from Vincent Jackson that might happen, but I think that the quality of looks that he's going to get is going to go up. I think that defenses are going to have to make sure that they're defending against Mike Evans a little bit more than they have with the other receivers in the past, and that's going to improve Vincent Jackson's ability to get deep. It's going to give him less uh, focus from the opposing defense, and I think that that's going to lead to nice fantasy success for Vincent Jackson. So he is my number nine fantasy wide receiver heading into the season. Now, number eight, we have Chicago Bears wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey, who had a pretty mediocre rookie season that was scarred with injuries, and it was just overall pretty disappointing. But man, he skyrocketed into fantasy excellence this past season. He had 89 catches for 1,400 yards and seven touchdowns in 2013. He's another one of these big physical receivers, and he's the perfect complement to Brandon Marshall in what has quickly become one of the NFL's best offenses under coach Mark Tressman. So some would argue that the offense was actually better under Josh McCown than it was under Jay Cutler, and I think statistically that's actually true. But even though the team opted to go with Jay Cutler versus Josh McCown, 
I still think that having a consistent quarterback to develop chemistry with is going to be really great for Alshon Jeffrey, and I expect him to have some huge games again in the season, but I also expect that there are going to be some times where he has some lulls, just like he did in 2013, where he only caught a couple passes in a few games, and he really wasn't producing the type of numbers that we would expect out of a guy that I have ranked here in the top 10. But the thing is, is that if you stick with Alshon Jeffrey and you just you fight through those weeks where he only catches three passes, there are going to be those weeks where he catches 10 passes for 200 yards and two or three touchdowns. And I think that that's the kind of thing that wins you fantasy football championships, those monster games where guys just absolutely destroy your opposing team. And even if the rest of your team doesn't do anything, Alshon Jeffrey just carries you to that win. That's the kind of thing that he can do. And that's why I put him as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver. I expect to see 10 to 12 touchdowns out of him, and I expect him to see uh, see him approach 85 to 90, 92, somewhere in that range in terms of reception. So he's going to have a nice yardage total as well. He's a great, great wide receiver one, and if you can somehow end up getting him as a wide receiver two, if people just aren't quite sold on him for whatever reason, I mean, he is an absolute monster, and he would be a big-time steal there. So let's move on now to number seven, and we've got Jordy Nelson of the Green Bay Packers. Now, Aaron Rodgers missed a big chunk of the season this past year, but that did not stop Jordy from continuing to produce at a high level. Jordy caught 85 passes for over 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns in 2013. Now, a lot of people look at him being a white guy, and they say that he is just a possession wide receiver. But if you have watched any of the Green Bay Packers film, you know that that's not the case. Jordy is actually one of the best deep threats in the entire NFL, and he's only a couple years removed from a 15-touchdown season. Now, with Aaron Rodgers back in the lineup, I'm really expecting great things out of Jordy Nelson. I think that he's typically drafted late in the second round, and I love to see him going there. I think that he gives you great value, and he's the kind of player who you can absolutely absolutely rely on as your wide receiver one. I don't think there's any reason to believe that he will not finish as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver this season. Moving on now to number six, and we've got Julio Jones, who was on in just an insane pace to start the 2013 season. Through five games, he had already accumulated 41 receptions for 580 yards. If you extrapolate those numbers out over the course of a 16-game season, Julio could have approached 131 catches for 1,856 yards. I mean, those are the type of numbers that rival what Calvin Johnson did two years ago. That's absolutely insane. But the thing is, is that he did get hurt. He underwent season-ending foot surgery. Now, all reports are that Julio's back and he's ready to produce, but there are always going to be concerns with him at this point. He's had to fight off injuries in the past. He missed 11 total games this past year, and it's just one of those things where the concern is there. In the back of our heads, it's always just sitting there kind of gnawing at us and saying, yeah, but he, he has the talent, but what if he doesn't play every game? He's not a, an injury risk like a Rob Gronkowski or something like that, but still, there's concerns to be had there, and they're legitimate. But with that being said, the high-end potential that Julio gives you makes him absolutely worth a second-round pick, in my opinion. I, I think that if you're looking for a guy who can potentially be the the top-scoring wide receiver at the, at the position at the end of the season, outside of the top five, I think that it's Julio Jones, and that's why I have him ranked at number six. I think that he is definitely going to be uh, returning to fantasy prominence this season, and with Roddy White being healthy as well, I really like that every he's going to have a great opportunity every single week to produce big numbers, so I, I definitely like to see that. Number five, we have Brandon Marshall of the Chicago Bears. This is the second Chicago Bear on this list, and there's a reason for it. It's amazing to think that a 100-catch, 1,300-yard, 12-touchdown season was actually a step back for Brandon Marshall from what he did in 2012, but that's the reality. Now, I'm not trying to say that Brandon Marshall's falling off by any means, or I'm not trying to hate on him or anything. What I'm saying is that 
This guy is putting up incredible numbers in Chicago. The chemistry that he has with Jay Cutler is very, very obvious. And even with Jeffrey emerging as a big-time weapon as well, Marshall still remains the top dog in Chicago's offense. He's still going to get the majority of the looks, and he's still going to be the top guy. So I think that there's a lot of concern that Alshon Jeffrey is going to somehow supplant him as the top guy, but I really don't worry about that. I would not be surprised to see Marshall up here again with over 100 catches and double-digit touchdowns, which would once again make him a top-five fantasy wide receiver. That's why I've got him ranked here at number five. Next on the list, we have A.J. Green of the Cincinnati Bengals, and after his third straight season of over 1,000 yards, and he's only been in the league for three years, I think it's fairly safe to assume that A.J. Green is one of the elite class of wide receivers in the NFL today. Green and his quarterback, Andy Dalton, came into the league together, and we've seen them both improve every single year. Their numbers go up, up, up every single year in all the categories. So that's something that we absolutely love to see. Now, the Bengals did promote their running backs coach, Hugh Jackson, to the offensive coordinator position. So there is a little bit of a concern that the team's going to be running the ball more in 2014 than they did in the previous few seasons. But trust me, there are still going to be plenty of passes that go A.J. Green's direction. He is by far the best wide receiver in this offense. There's really not anybody else that comes close in terms of pass catching skills, whether it be at the running back position, the tight end position, wide receiver position. A.J. Green is by far the best receiver that this team has. He's still young. His skills are still developing. He's literally still getting better, which is insane to think. And it would almost be inconceivable at this point to think that A.J. Green doesn't finish as a top 10 fantasy wide receiver this season. He's very, very safe, and he's an elite player who can produce elite numbers. I absolutely love him. Top four, excellent value. A.J. Green's a monster. Moving on to number three, and we've got the beast from Dallas, the man who throws up the X and the guy who has 25 touchdown receptions and over 2,600 yards receiving over the past two seasons. That is, of course, Dez Bryant. Now, Dez does make some questionable decisions off the field from time to time. He gets into problems when he gets into practices against teams in the preseason and things like that, but his on-field performances absolutely cannot be denied. He's the first, second, and third option in the Dallas Cowboys passing game, and they could pass a ball, the ball a ton this season. I know DeMarco Murray looked great this past year, and there really isn't any reason to hate on Murray, but I fully expect the Cowboys to have one of the worst defenses in the NFL this season. I'm talking like world-class level crappy. They are absolutely awful, and that's coming from a Dallas Cowboys fan. I'm not a hater on the Cowboys. They're my favorite team, but look... Teams are going to score a lot on this defense. They haven't made any significant improvements. They lost to Marcus Ware. They lost Sean Lee for the season. They lost Jason Hatcher. And I'm a Cowboys fan, and I hate to say it, but they're going to have to pass the ball a ton to keep up. And I think Dez is going to thrive because of that. I mean, I look for him to catch over 100 passes this season, and I would be surprised if he's not in this solid double-digit touchdown ratio again. I think that he's going to finish somewhere between 12 to 15 touchdowns, which absolutely locks him in as a top-five fantasy wide receiver. I have him at number three. I could see him being down anywhere between three to five-ish. But, I mean, at this point, we're talking about elite receivers versus elite receivers. Dez is a beast. I love the fact that he's going to have more opportunity this year, in my opinion, and he's produced at a high level before, so that's why he's number three on my list. Next on the list, we have Denver Broncos wide receiver Demarius Thomas, and I know that there are some fantasy experts out there who actually have Demarius ranked as the number one fantasy wide receiver going into this season, and honestly, I don't blame him. Thomas is the ideal combination of size and speed, but beyond that, he's in the best possible situation when it comes to production from the fantasy wide receiver position. He's arguably playing with the best quarterback of all time, and he has a tight end and a slot receiver who do an amazing job frustrating defenses underneath. And Demarius himself is coming off of back-to-back 1,400-yard receiving seasons. He's an absolute monster for fantasy, and I believe he's one of only two wideouts that I would actually take with a first-round draft pick this season in fantasy football. There's practically no risk here, and he's going to put up huge numbers in this offense. I absolutely love Demarius Thomas. I would, Like I said, I would have no problem if somebody took him as the number one fantasy wide receiver. 
it the thing is is that I just have a little bit of a man crush on my number one fantasy wide receiver. I just have one word for you. Megatron. Yeah. Calvin Johnson is the most physically skilled wide receiver ever to play the game of football. I know there are guys like Jerry Rice and Randy Moss and Terrell Owens who've put out put up absolutely incredible numbers, but none of them has the combination of insane speed, insane ball catching skills, and just that giant like stature that he has. I mean, he's pretty much unstoppable. He had the one of the most ridiculous games that I've ever seen a player have in the in the NFL against the Cowboys last year. And I just I was watching it, and obviously the coaches are going, "We have to defend this guy," and they just couldn't do it. He was just murdering them. He put up an absolutely insane game. I mean, on the year, Calvin caught 84 passes for nearly 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns, and that was a step down from what he did in each of the previous two seasons because he actually missed two games last year. He has over 5,100 yards, 33 touchdowns in the past three seasons alone. That's, uh, those numbers are just mind-boggling. Detroit's offense might not be what Denver's is in terms of efficiency, but Calvin makes up for it with that pure, raw, just nasty ability. And the thing is, is that Although I understand that people love Demarius Thomas, and quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Thomas edge out Calvin as the top fantasy wide receiver this year. Uh, the thing is, is Calvin just has that kind of talent that I guess is just it's too pa- too much to pass up at my in my opinion. I mean, Matt Stafford is going to throw him the ball time and time and time again, just like he always does. Calvin's going to produce amazing numbers, just like he always does. If you're looking to produce elite numbers from the fantasy wide receiver position and you do not want to have much risk, Calvin Johnson is your guy. I have him rated as my number five overall player, and he's the top non-running back on my board. So, I I mean, that pretty much says it all. I think that he is the best fantasy wide receiver of this generation, and I don't see any reason why he is not a top five overall fantasy player. I like him better than Eddie Lacy. The only guys I have rated ahead of him overall are Matt Forte, Jamal Charles, LaShawn McCoy, and Adrian Peterson. So... With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That is going to do it for the wide receiver position here for standard scoring. I will be back with another video breaking down the top 10 fantasy wide receivers for PPR leagues, which is points per reception if you're new. Um, and if you are if you don't understand what that means, basically what points per reception is, is that you get a point every time that your player catches the ball. So there's certain players that catch more passes versus others um, who maybe catch less passes, but they're deeper. So it kind of balances those guys out. So I think that uh, we'll see that probably tomorrow on my channel. So check back here and you guys should be able to come across that. If you have any questions or anything, make sure that you leave those in the comments section below. Also, I want to hear what your thoughts are as far as the top 10 fantasy wide receivers in standard scoring leagues. Let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. If you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button. And of course, guys, I really do appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Everybody who has been leaving comments in these videos, it does mean a lot to me. I love talking about fantasy football, so thank you guys. I enjoy it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.